Okay, who is writing these shows for Gen Z? Because we need to talk. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Emergency and welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today we are back and we are talking about media and specifically Gen Z media. And now I know that I just said that the writing for Gen Z shows sucks. Actually, I don't know if sucks is necessarily the right word for it. It's more so that the writers of these shows just don't seem to understand Gen Z as a whole. Like it's gotten to the point where much of TV entertainment just doesn't seem to know how to portray Gen Z at all. Us being Gen Z, and if you're not Gen Z watching this, it's okay. You can be Gen Z for this video. <laughs> so in this video, we're going to be talking about why accurate Gen Z representation is so important, touching on the difference between Gen Z culture and AAVE because a lot of y'all got that mixed up, and then breaking down how this is seen in different shows. Looking at shows that are seemingly geared towards Gen Z, they either don't try at all to have accurate representation, try too much to try and portray like the Gen Z aesthetic, and then finally shows that actually get it right and what it means to get it right. But before we do all that, if you are new to the channel and like all things pop culture, TV, and fashion, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the content that we have going on here. Also make sure to follow me on my social media is here at Emergency, that's Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And while you're at it, I would greatly appreciate if you leave a like on this video because that helps out so, so much with the algorithm. So I'll give you a second to do that right now while you can stare at the star on my chest. <laughs> Say click, take a pic. <laughs> Did you like the video? Cool. <laughs> So first let's talk about why Gen Z shows currently are bad and why it's important that real representation of Gen Z is important. So why is it currently bad? Right now it seems that for a majority of shows, the writers that are creating these stories don't necessarily have a firm grasp of like what Gen Z is actually like. Mainly the way that teenagers and young adults actually speak nowadays, how we dress, the things that we really care about, and most importantly, the humor. It just really feels like as a whole, even though like shows that are typically marketed towards Gen Z or you think would be like Gen Z shows, like shows that take place in high school or like college, or just advertises being like Gen Z shows, end up playing into what millennials would sort of resonate with more, with some of the dialogue being very similar to what you'd see in like a Buzzfeed poll. Now, why does any of this actually matter? Well, in the grand scheme, it doesn't necessarily. But if you've seen any videos on this channel, you know that I'm a big advocate for representation. And I just feel like if you're going to make a show that is meant to tell the stories or the experiences of people in a select age group or demographic for people in that demographic it should reflect so when you're like looking back on these shows you can be like oh wow that was a real moment in time like like think about the movies and shows from like the 90s and the 80s like they were cemented in time as being like iconic pieces of work for that time that can be appreciated to this day like think mean girls clueless the fashion the lingo the things they cared about like the humor like like it all just really captures like the 90s and early 2000s as like an era which was just like a really big pop culture moment for millennials which we still draw in inspiration from as Gen Z to this day. So it's clear that having media like that really does make that cements a generation, a time period, which would be nice to have for our generation. Now, while the lack of accurate Gen Z representation in media is important, I do want to mention how it is not uniquely a Gen Z issue. As I'm sure previous generations had this going on, especially before they were able to get into like writers rooms or have like people write their stories. Like I know I just gassed up millennials, but I'm sure they went through periods of like misrepresentation. Given that for a good period of time, Gen X was writing their stories and, and if I've learned anything, it's that Gen X and the boomers really did not like the millennials. Like the way I vividly remember reading articles, scathing articles, calling millennials lazy, entitled, failures. I'm like, damn, shit. Like, chill out for a second, please. <laughs> Let them get a break. Let them catch their breath. Which is why in a lot of Gen X and boomer targeted media, like I'm thinking specifically movies for this, like millennials are shown in that light of being like lazy, mooching off their parents, and just like whiny overall into that, like I am sorry. <laughs> millennials, I am sorry. So luckily to Gen Z's advantage for the most part, millennials don't hate Gen Z. So we're not getting the same negative outlooks for the most part, except for that like one SNL skip, which is a whole nother issue in and of itself. But while Gen Z might not be the target of some kind of intergenerational vitriol, come on vocab. Some of the main issues in Gen Z representation 
education and media do stem from the way that we are written in these shows. Where either it seems like the writers don't try at all to really get our generational identity, or it just comes across as trying too much to be relatable and just comes off inauthentic. And let's talk about why that is and the importance of generational identities. Now before the comments come flooding in on some, y'all aren't the first to have shit, y'all y'all ain't the only ones to have some kind of generational identity, we had it rough too. Like yes, I do want to acknowledge that having a strong generational identity is not something exclusive to Gen Z or something that Gen Z necessarily owns. As previous generations have their own fair share of generational identifiers, things that really bond them or connect them all as a generation, with boomers taking advantage of a system that was really meant for them, or should I say, meant for them. <laughs> <laughs> Every single generation life has had their iconic pop culture moments and things that just really bind them together as cultural identity as a generation that were all kind of influenced by the things that were happening around them societally. Like boomers were living in a post-World War II world, recreating traditional values and being the wealthiest generation alive in total. Gen X being the byproduct of that and seeing the system work for their parents. Gen X saw the rise of the punk and grunge scene, sort of being known as like the lost generation. For some reason, I think of them as like edgelords, even though my parents are Gen X and they're very much not that. And then millennials, of course, having the entirety of the 90s, which I feel like speaks for itself. But societally trusting a system that their parents said would benefit them later, only to have that system then crumble beneath them and kind of leave them fending for themselves. To now Gen Z who have seen our parents in Gen X give everything to their jobs and corporations, only for them to have been discarded in a recession and seeing how the system is treated millennials and we've chosen not to do any of that. But the most important generational identifier for Gen Z has to definitely be technology and the the internet. Never before has a generation been more tangibly and visually connected. Like it's literally possible to see what's going on virtually anywhere in the world at any given time, which has its perks and drawbacks, but ultimately led to the globalization of information through the prevalence of social media through our formative years and into our teen and adult years, which meant that things that trends, politics, general sentiments, humor and different mannerisms could all be widespread to the point where it's really easy for anyone to identify anywhere around the globe. Like there's just something about the fact that you can quote like a TikTok sound or maybe even a Vine and there's there's a good chance at any point in the world that someone in your age group will actually know exactly what you're talking about and will be able to finish the joke, the punchline, the sound. That really is just wild. Which has created a whole bunch of different microcultures and cultural identifiers within our generation, which I feel like just aren't necessarily as prevalent or at least not as frequent as it is with Gen Z. Now I'm by no means saying that Gen Z is a monolith because I can already see people in comments being like, I'm a member of Gen Z, but I feel like I was born in the wrong generation. Like, I don't really identify with Gen Z culture. I don't like talk like that or, or I don't think that the jokes are that funny. Like, okay, good for you. But I feel like it's hard to deny that there aren't strong cultural identifiers to people that are on social media or even off social media that have become synonymous with Gen Z. Like our drive to activism, no matter how performative, general apathy for the future, our humor and affinity for memes, and just generally how open and accepting we are as a generation for diversity and just people from different walks of life. Now I feel like that was a lot. Let's get into how all of this actually plays out into shows, media, etc. But first tackling the first category of shows that I feel like are written with Gen Z in mind, in which writers don't seem to actually be trying at all to resonate specifically with a Gen Z audience. And in this subsect of shows, the focus isn't necessarily on giving accurate representation of shows and more so focused on just telling stories of people that happen to be in their youth. <laughs> and I feel like we see this often in shows that are geared more towards a wider audience or mainly just towards millennials. And I feel like shows that fall into this category usually are like nostalgia reboots or they like take an old show from the 90s, but then like bring it up to like the 2010s or like 2020s without actually updating the mannerisms, lingo, humor, all of that of like the characters that would be in this era and would be Gen Z. Like outside of that, it really just is kind of like millennial in the 2020s. And the first show I think of just because it was one of the most recent ones I watched was the Fate Wink Saga. Like in that case, they just happen to be teens in this current era. Because whether it was the fashion, the dialogue, or just like the characters themselves, nothing about that was giving like a 17, 18 year old in the late 2010s or 2020s. Like I get it's a mystical world where they have fairies and banded ones running around, but still, you know, I feel like it was a missed opportunity. Other shows that fall under this category for me are On My Block, which might be controversial, but really I feel like that show could have taken place at any point, like it could have been now or even back in the early 2000s. In my opinion, Outer Banks, which is in the same situation, like it could have been, like it, that could have taken place at any point in the last 20, 25 years. And I won't be arguing with anyone on that because I am still mad that those kids tried to record not on phones that they had, but on an old timey camera that could have been destroyed and suffered water damage. Like that is sick to me. <laughs> and then there's Riverdale. And girl, I don't think I need to explain further. <laughs> 
And that's not to say that any of these shows in this category are bad, besides Riverdale. But it's just the theme of like shows that are geared towards the young people that they're trying to portray. And then there's the complete opposite where showrunners will write shows that seem to be just doing too much to the point where you can like see that they're really trying to resonate with the younger audience but to the point where it seems like forced, like it's not authentic, it's like an outsider looking in and trying to tell that story. And again, I'm aware that this next piece was made to be satirical, but I feel like actually does a great job of explaining what it looks like to actual young people, to people in Gen Z, but the SNL skit. Is this Morgan Squad? Gang gang. Or it's like a caricaturization of Gen Z, of Gen Z. I use that very loosely because that entire skit was just was just like the misuse of AAVE, which is a problem in Gen Z, especially recently with the prevalence of TikTok. We need to get one thing clear. While we're all here, AAVE, African American Vernacular English, shit that black people have been saying for years, generations, is not Gen Z slang. When I'm talking about the Gen Z identity, I am not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. And while it's okay that we can all laugh and enjoy a good piece of content made by a black creator or just someone black on the internet that uses some AAVE, that does not mean that we can oop child slay period up period uh our way <laughs> into some AAVE. Like not everybody can claim that. With that said, let's go back on topic. <laughs> when these shows that do too much or try too much actually come out, it makes Gen Z wonder, like, who are you trying to sell? You know, like, who are you trying to appeal to? Because the lingo, the way people talk, the fashion, it just does not seem like something that young people actually do. Like, prime example, Chini and Georgia. <laughs> I will talk about that show till the end of time. Like, I love that show. It is so entertaining. But who, <laughs> who is that supposed to represent? Because, <laughs> ooh. Another one that is beloved, but people say does too much is Euphoria. And Euphoria, I feel like, is a middle ground because, because the dialogue can sometimes really hit and the fashion, of course, hits. Euphoria as a whole has made waves for Gen Z fashion. That cannot be disputed. But I feel like people's main thing for Euphoria doing too much has to do with the whole dramatization of the show. Like the plot points and such just seem like it's really trying to be as edgy as possible to like reflect Gen Z edginess, which can be a little bit too much for people. But yeah, I'd say Euphoria is kind of like a middle ground. The new Gossip Girl is an example of doing too much. Like again, fashion eats, but like the plot points and heavy on the dialogue is just like, what is going on? Who, who are you? <laughs> My mind races to the last episode where homegirl is like texting Gossip Girl being like, I'm going to take you down one bit to another. Like, girl, be serious. <laughs> Never Have Ever kind of falls into this category where the dialogue is kind of like an almost hit. Also kind of a mess because I feel like no one in Gen Z would like actually say a lot of those things that they say. Grownish is another one that comes to mind. I feel like that one had great potential to be like a good Gen Z show showing like post high school life because that is a whole other issue of Gen Z being trapped in high school for right now, even though a lot of us are past that, college, even post-college. But Grownish was for millennials, I'm sorry. Grownish is relatable to a certain extent of being a college student, but not necessarily with being a Gen Z college student all the way. Like, I feel like it does teeter-totter on like being kind of millennial-ish with like the dialogue, especially with some like the Vine era humor and sayings that they have going on. Yeah, I don't know, it doesn't like really sit too well. And finally, the last one that comes to mind, which is kind of another half and half, I'd say like parts of Generation, because Generation does a great job with like fashion and just like the ideals of Gen Z, but some parts felt like they were really trying to like push the Gen Z narrative without it being like actual, I don't know how to accurately describe it, it just didn't feel like an all the way hit to me, you know? Although I'm still utterly gutted that it did not get another season. And like I said, for the first category, just because these shows try too much does not mean that they're bad shows at all. It just does not feel authentically representative of young people today. And for a very long time, I didn't actually get like the importance of that or even really care for the most part, just because I've been so used to like not receiving that or not seeing that accurately represented in media and TV. But things changed when I actually got a taste of what accurate representation of just Gen Z in a TV show would look like. And I've talked about the show in its own video and I've mentioned it in multiple different videos. But I feel like one of the best shows that would be a good time capsule for 
Gen Z at this current moment, not the original, the reboot, would be Heartbreak High. Whole bunch of love for that show. I made a bunch of TikToks reacting to it. And a lot of comments were saying how they didn't know that they were actually missing this kind of content. They felt so seen and they didn't realize they were actually like missing this kind of representation. And I felt the exact same way. Like there was so much diversity in the show that didn't seem forced at all. They accurately captured the Gen Z lingo, mannerisms, fashion, generational sentiments towards things like climate change, politics, social media, social issues, and just general humor. Like they get it and it just feels good to watch as a young person. Other shows that do a pretty good job of this are Grand Army. Grand Army just felt real in like an American sense because Heartbreak High is Australian but still was relatable. Grand Army felt like real in an American young person going through high school. Like the show starts off with like a school threat if you get what I'm talking about. And like honestly I don't know how much more American Gen Z you can get than that because I feel like that is unfortunately a collective experience. But aside from that I feel like that was like really relatable as like a pre-TikTok or like early TikTok era of Gen Z. Then you have shows like Sex Education which are really interesting because they also have diversity that doesn't seem forced in both racial, gender, and sexual orientation. And I feel like it gives a good representation of like specifically like the dating and and like coming of ageness of our generation. Again, in a way that doesn't seem forced. And interestingly, in a way that I feel like is not talked about a bunch, shows pretty accurate representation of like what a Gen Z child and parent situation sort of feels like with like the parents of the show also resonating with young people. And I also wrote Generation down here again, because like I said, Generation is like half and half. I like it trying a little bit too hard, but also getting the fashion mannerisms and general sentiments down. And I feel like these shows are fan favorites for a reason. And I feel like this list is very interesting because two out of the four of these shows actually are canceled. So what that says about accurate representation and how that translates to widespread viewership is something to be noted and could be discussed. Because just because something resonates very closely with Gen Z doesn't mean that we're actually going to watch it. Do we actually want content that tells us about ourselves and gives us a realistic lens? Or are we okay with this familiar distance that we feel for a majority of shows that are geared towards young people? Oh, jump scare. But I was thinking about this more and it made me realize that like, it might not just have to do with like Gen Z interest in the show as much as it has to do with like each show's budget and the amount of marketing that they do. Because when you think about these shows that are like really Gen Z, they're kind of niche because they're not promoted as much as like your typical drama. Like, like personally, I didn't hear about a like generation, a grand army, a heartbreak high, if it was not for y'all like letting me know. But when it came to like other shows, it was like really hard to miss them coming out just because there was so much marketing and promotion and like money put behind it. I don't know if it's completely like on us for like not continuing these shows and having them be more prevalent as much as it is like the people behind the scenes people promoting the shows kind of undervaluing these shows potential and their value and how much we're actually gonna like them i don't know i feel like a mix of both could be cool but i definitely like to see more good examples because like i said personally i didn't know what i was missing until i actually saw shows like heartbreak high grand army sex education and realized how good it can be and how refreshing it could be to see something like that, that resonated so much with like real life. All of this is to say that we are a bit away from creating consistent Gen Z centered and focused TV entertainment and media that just feels right in that sense. And it'll be interesting to see how the landscape changes as Gen Z grows older and actually has a seat in the writer's room, being able to tell stories from our perspective. But then again, will the cycle repeat? Because by the time that we're dominating the writer's room, Gen Alpha will be right at our coattails looking for content that represents them. So I don't know. But until it becomes a reality or at least becomes more common. I guess we just gotta hope that the current writers are able to get it right. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video, y'all. That is my long-winded answer of why the writing for Gen Z shows kind of sucks. Now I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Gen Z representation in media and TV? If you're a part of Gen Z, do you feel like you care about any of this? Do you think we need things to be more realistic? Are you okay with things being not necessarily super duper relatable or it feels like you're like watching someone's life? And if you're not a part of Gen Z, I'd love to know your thoughts as well. Were you aware of this even being a thing? And if so, do you actually feel like it's a real issue? I know some of y'all like to tussle when it comes to generational stuff, so let's keep it simple. But other than that, y'all, thanks so, so much for watching. Again, if you're new, make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like on this video, follow me on my socials at emergency, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.